Oh, I'm so excited. Hey, it's Romania Black, and we're here. We're to the OVA. I'm really, really excited because lots of things have happened uh, since I recorded episode 12. I, when I recorded episode 12, I wasn't even really thinking about the audio drama. I thought I'd resigned myself to thinking that the audio drama, I recorded it ahead of time because I couldn't wait between episodes 11 and 12. I was like, nah, I recorded them like very quickly. And so then I took a break. And whilst I was waiting between recording this and the OVA, the audio drama dropped and everybody freaked out. <laughs> so I thank you all uh, on Patreon so much for helping me in the Discord. Specifically, I want to give a big shout out to Anime Annie because not only did Anime Annie compile the advertisements and extras that I'm going to watch in this reaction alongside the OVA. But also they made this really handy guide uh, to how to get the audio drama because I'm from the US and so I, the, she, they made this guide that uh, was able for people on the Discord for Nana, Nana being Nana, to go online and it was it was such a journey. Like I spoke with a Chinese customer service person for two hours via chat as we tried to get text messages to stream through so I could transfer diamonds to an account so that I could go from the account to let them in and take screenshots so they could see that I was the person I said I was and so they could give put the diamonds from one account to the other so that I could buy the audio drama and prove to Nana I'd bought it. And it was like, oh my gosh, but I have it. <laughs> I have the audio drama. And so thus, um, Nana being Nana on her Discord, and I will, um, I'll place a link below to the Twitter, the tweet that um, she posted about it. Um, basically, Nana being Nana is also going to get credit next week from the on starting with the audio drama for um, doing English translations because doing the Lord's work because I can't translate Chinese. So uh, that's what next week, I'm so excited. It's like things fell into place for season one of of, Moda, of Heaven Official's Blessing, like Modao Zushi, where I will be able to read the novel chapters. I'll listen to the audio drama episode first. We're going to do it episode by episode, so I know with Modao Zushi I did a couple episodes at a time. Not going to work out for this one because she's translating like one episode at a time. Bless her for doing it all in like a week. So we're going to do episode one, and then the chapters that will correspond with that episode is what I will read, and then also look at the manhwa the manhwa for that. So it'll kind of be like a three for one. We'll be listening to the audio drama, then going back through the novel, and then I'll be highlighting the manhwa and the really good pieces from it. So very, very excited. Very, very excited for that. The only unfortunate thing is that I will not be able to use audio because of not only copyright, but because I don't, because Nana is compiling the video, so I want to give credit to her and also be respectful for the time she's taking and her rules. Her rules for um, sharing videos was that you cannot have sound clips. If you're doing reactions, there was no sound. So for those of you that are not able to purchase the audio drama, I am sorry. For me, it was the best $10 I've spent and <laughs> the best two hours of customer service I've ever spent. So I can only imagine, I can only imagine that this one side, I went through KACN. That's where I went to go and do the, do the whole diamonds because I was able to use PayPal and do all of that instead of having to use Ally Pay or something different. And I can only imagine that those people working there are like, why are we getting thousands of calls for customer service internationally for our site? What are we selling? And it's like, you're selling Heaven Official's Blessing. That's what you're selling. So um, first and foremost, before I dive into the comments with this OVA, um, I, I will talk about the structure of this video. I'm just so giddy about the audio drama and the fact that we're getting it. Um, I have had a couple people on Twitter be like, oh, don't listen to it. I The Discord, we talked about the whole Weibo drama. I didn't know Weibo was like Chinese Facebook until a week ago, and I was like, oh, okay. I don't care. <laughs> so, I, as far as I am concerned, unless MXTX makes a public statement that says, do not listen to the audio drama, I'm gonna listen to it. <laughs> because I'm like, one, she's probably getting royalties from it, so I'm gonna help a girl out. But also, because she was involved with the Murazushi one, so I'm assuming she was involved with this. I know a lot of people are mad because of the voice actors. They're not the same for the Donghua versus the audio drama, but that's kind of the same thing for Modao Zushi too. The, you know, untamed versus Donghua versus uh, audio drama voice actors from Modao Zushi were not all the same either. So as long as they fit the role, it's fine. And I'm mainly, to be honest, the audio drama, I am listening for it 
I am listening to it for the emotion, but I'm also listening to it more because it's more in line with the novel usually. And I've heard that this audio drama is going to have the extra stuff in it that MAX has been working on. So there's going to be even more new stuff, new content. So that's what I care about is the content. And it'll, I'm sure it'll be delivered great. But as far as who the voice actors are, I'm sure they'll be fine. Although I have heard that the voice actor for Sishui in Murazushi is playing Hua Chong and I'm like, How's that gonna work? So I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to think of Sishui like that. He's so innocent. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm excited for the audio drama. That will all start next week. Pretty excited. Fun times. Um, but in the meantime, what we're gonna do today is I was gonna start with the advertisements, but C on Patreon noted that I needed to start watching the OVA first because of possible spoilers. And I was like, look at you looking out for your girl. <laughs> all right. So. That's, that's what I'm going to do. So thank you, C. Um, I'm going to start out with the OVA. And then I'll probably, there'll probably be two links down below on YouTube. There'll probably be a link down below for the OVAs and a link down below for the, um, the advertisements and stuff. Because obviously I can't air them on here because of copyright. So um, I'll definitely do the OVA first. Then we'll talk about it. And then thanks to Anime Annie, I will look at the advertisements and the extras. And then at the very end, we will talk about the OP and ED song lyrics. I've got them pulled up. I'm going to react to them. It's going to be fun. So this is going to be a very fun, fun video. Lots of things. It's like it's our, it's our heaven officials blessing Donghua odds and ends <laughs> before we start the novel. Um, also to answer another question, the trailer. I have said this in a previous video, but I'm going to watch the season two trailer when I'm done with volume one, the events of this seasons of the Donghua in the novel. Once, the, here's the thing. The audio drama covers 19 episodes, and I was told on through the Discord that the first episode of the audio drama is covering like three chapters, but there's not that many chapters in the first volume. So I'm like, is the audio drama going to sneak into the second volume of the English version? We may be covering new ground in the audio drama and getting into season two. So I'm like, that may happen if we get to that point. Um, if we get to that point where the audio drama is going to be getting into season two material, then I will definitely, rec I will react to the season two trailer before we start that. So, or at least that's what I think I'll do. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But I do have some comments before we start, and this is a long intro already, but we had lots to talk about. So, um, PM. PM said that Nan Feng is actually with Feng Jin and Fu Yao is with Mu Xing. So I always get them confused. I don't know why. For some reason, Nan Feng just seems like he would go with Mu Xing. I don't know why. It just seems like it would fit. So I'm going to have to keep my Fongs together. I'm going to keep Nan Feng and Feng Xin together and then Fu Yao with Mu Xing. That's, I'm going to have to make sure that our Fongs stay together. Going to keep that in mind. Um, Kian Fong, speaking of Fong, um, Kian Fong talks about how Fu Yao asking if there's anyone in the sinner's pit uh, in episode 11. And actually, there's no people in the pit. It's a god, some alive ghosts, piles of dead ghosts, snakes, but no people. <laughs> it's like, well, it's kind of ironic. That's really funny. I liked that. Um, SQQLHB314 noted that um, Heaven Officials Blessing Season 1 might as well be called All the Problems Caused by Pays. <laughs> literally it. It's like pay, between Pei Ming and Pei Jr., all of the problems caused in season one, that they're just responsible for everything. Um, but also, Pei seeing Xing, uh, Xi Lian, Pei seeing Xi Lian in a wedding dress now probably isn't that suspicious because the fact that he wasn't phased was because um, Pei Jr. has seen him in like all different kinds of garb while he was General Hua and otherwise. So I'm like, that's interesting. No wonder he wasn't phased. For the record, uh, Shi Lian looks much better in a wedding dress than that General Garb. Just saying. And then, uh, also I want to say that Pei, Pei, uh, SQQ said that Pei judged the kids that were beating up Ban Yu saying they were people of the Half Moon Pass but they could have not been. So SQQLBH314 uh, was noting how, yeah, he's kind of a little bit prejudiced without even knowing for sure that the people making fun of Bon Yu were even people that weren't her own, you know, that were Half Moon Pass people. So I thought that was interesting. Um, Kaylin V notes that um, even though he didn't die, Shilian probably felt all the pain of being trampled to death. And that, I hadn't taken that into consideration, that's terrifying. The fact that he probably felt being crushed to death and just didn't die. 
That doesn't bode well. I don't like what that means for Sheelian. No wonder he would block out that memory from his past. That seems like it'd be a bit traumatic. Can't imagine why he wouldn't want to remember that. So thanks, Kaylin. <laughs> Um, Anime Annie, speaking of which, um, says that the Windmaster has a whisk. I said it looked like a little Swiffer. A whisk. And when, when they said that, I was like, oh, that reminds me of Song, Song Lan and Shi, uh, Xingxin from uh, Modao Zushi. Because they kind of had the whisks, too. Like the very Taoist sort of um, accessories there. I thought that was very interesting. Um, Four Sunsets notes that Fu Yao in his traditional Chinese... Um, is not as callous as the Netflix subtitles make him out to be. And I was like, okay, that makes sense that he's not speaking as um, brutally as he is in the Netflix translation. But he does kind of speak bluntly, so it's easy for it to come off that way. And then um, Pei Jr., for Sunsets Noted, may be calling Banyu his subordinate to try to shift the blame onto himself and away from her, saying, no, she was my subordinate. I was in charge of her. It's my fault this happened, not hers. And I think that's actually kind of sweet that he's trying to pin blame on himself and take it away from her. I like that. I, I kind of like that he's trying to put a little bit of the blame on himself. And then finally, um, Sarah Linda talked about how San Long, San Long may be the true identity of our Mr. Smirk, that Hua Chong may be a persona. That he that was developed not only by himself but by the gods to describe him as this fierce, you know, ca catastrophic ghost. But in reality, San Long, since he wants Shilian to call him that, that might be his actual. Even though it's not his true form, it might be like what he wants to be for him. And so I like that. Um, and then obviously, yeah, Shilian's falling in love. We ended the last episode with there being a basically a proposed dinner date. And I love how Sarah Linda phrased this. A dinner date with his um, possible ghostly daughter locked in a pickle jar. <laughs> it's like, that's up his sleeve. I was like, if only MXTX can be like, we're going to have this romantic dinner between a god and a ghost and his ghostly daughter that's stuck in a pickle jar hidden up his sleeve. Only MXTX can make that sentence not only plausible, but also slightly romantic. <laughs> so, so that's really fun. So yeah, I've, I've talked for 12 minutes, but, um, but I, I'm really excited for this OVA. I cannot wait to see what all gets cooked up in this. Y'all, it's an OVA and it's at the very end. So, hmm, what we got here? So let, let's not waste any more time and find out. It's 20 minutes. I'm like, what could we cover in 20 minutes? So we're going to watch A Heaven Official's Blessing, episode 13, the OVA. <laughs> and we're going to do that here in three, two, one, and let's uh, go. All right. I love this OVA. <laughs> You all were right. I, I love this OVA a lot. <laughs> I was like in the credits going, I'm going to take so many screenshots. <laughs> so Discord, be ready. So, oh my gosh. Oh, mm, mm. This, this is exactly what I want out of an OVA for this series. I, I don't need heavy plot, which we did get some things related to plot. So I white work out here. We did get some things related to, to Hua Chong and, and Shilian, but... I didn't need anything like advancing the plot necessarily. I just need like some good one-on-one -on -one time between Shilian and San Long, which is exactly what we get. Exactly what we get. I like how it's interesting at the beginning of this series, when they first set out towards Half Moon Pass, Fu Yao and Nan Fong were like, we don't trust this shady guy that could be a Devastation Ring ghost. So we're not going to let you out of our sight, Shilian. And by the time this OVA happens, they're like, He's maybe Hua Chong, but you, you'll, he kind of likes you, so I guess we're fine. <laughs> like, it just, I like they just gave up. They're like, well, if he is Hua Chong, what do we do? We don't want to, we don't want to confirm anything, so we'll just let it fester. And you seem like you're fine, Shili, and he seems like he won't harm you. I'm sure you guys will get along swimmingly. Oh, interesting. So, so I think the cool thing, I think what's most noticeable about, about, Shilian at this point and what I'm really excited about reading in the novel is that Shilian really doubts himself and doesn't have for as smart as he is and how intuitive he is and how like kind and compassionate and cinnamon bunny he is he really is hard on himself and he does not have a lot of self-worth and I'm like 
what? And it seems like Hua Chong is like polar opposite, except when it comes to Xi Lian and what he views of him. Like he is bound and I'm like, Hua Chong, <laughs> unless this form is not your real form, unless the form you've shown him that we've seen so far is not his true, true form. He keeps making it out like he's a goblin. I'm like, you're freaking handsome. What? What? Why are you worried about Sheely and not thinking you're uggo when you're a freaking tin? What, what is happening? Unless he looks different than how he's looked. Unless again, it's another mask. So the idea of masks, that's, that's interesting. I want to put that up here. The concept of the mask, right? So the concept of the mask, that, that's a big part of this that we'll talk about with our, with our boy Hua Chong and Xi Lian. So interesting. I, so curious, but yeah, so we skipped this in OP. I'm so glad the OP all makes sense now that that was Pei Jr. in there with, with Bon Yu. Thank you for not spoiling that. I, even, even in Patreon, nobody said anything. Even after I started talking about episode 12, nobody said, oh, hey, that's Pei Jr. in the OP in case you haven't noticed. I'm glad it, it all just like whoo, everything hit now and it all make man that should have been such a spoiler would have been such a spoiler huh but I went whoo, over the head so yeah we go back to our shrine our cute little shrine that has lanterns now it, things are getting better we're getting little red lanterns too by the way they're red lanterns like Hua Chong donated those and they got all this stuff for the shrine so honestly I think that I think that Shilian could have made a pretty decent stew had he not, you know, forgot about it in favor of going and helping Bon Yu, like, have a heart to heart. I think the stew could have been fine, right? But no, I'm like, Quachong, you were inside the, the house the whole time while he was having that heart to heart. You could have stirred that sucker or turned the heat off. <laughs> but no. And so he says Hua Chong's name, the Crimson Rain Salt Flower, and he's like, well, how do you like that? What do you think about that? He says, it's quite different from when others called me that. Hmm. He's like, how is it different? He says, it feels extremely respectful. Hmm. Enough, enough about me. Tell me more about you. He's like, we've been talking about me this whole time. What about you? So I want to put, um, I'm going to put San Long. San Long slash uh, Hua Chong right here. We'll put him here, our boy. And then over here, I'm gonna put, because it's blue and it's different, I'm gonna put Xi Lian for that. All right, and go from there. So yeah, he's like, you were the bridegroom who took me away in Mount Eugen, right? And I love that, I love he's like, mm, so I was the bridegroom, huh? huh? I love that God, just him as San Long. Mm-hmm. Mr. Mr. Easy on the eyes, Smirk Jr., right? And he's like, oh no, no, no. I mean, I mean, you were pretended to be the bridegroom to take me away, right? And I love that I love that song long when he's like sitting back, he's like, Oh no, I didn't pretend to be the bridegroom. No. And he's like, Well then why did you appear? And he's like, Well, it's for one of two reasons. Either I did it because I wanted to see you. I wanted, I went there for you or because I had too much time on my hands. And she lands like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do all that for me. You're a devastation rank ghost. Why would you come and find little old me? And he's like, or I had a lot of time to spare. I think it's both. Which do you think it is? Hmm. I love that y'all said in the comments that his, his, uh, his animal representation for, um, San Long is a fox. And Shilian is a ferret. I'm like, it's a fox is perfect. A, fo a fox fits absolutely perfectly for him. So he establishes that he had a lot of time, a lot of time to spare, and came for him, for Shilian. And Shilian, again, Shilian, when he asks him what she thinks, he says, well, it's hard to pick but you do seem to have a lot of spare time. He doesn't think that he was worth uh, San Long coming to get him. So he lacks a lot of self-worth, which I feel for Shilian because Shilian has so many good things going for him. Like, why does he feel so bad about himself? Again, he has a spotty memory, so it's like, 
obviously he's pushed some things out, so it's going to be interesting reading the novel and getting it all from his perspective and seeing how it's different than what it's... Because here's the thing. We are watching the Donghua and hearing what Shi Lian is telling San Long, but we don't know what he's thinking. We don't get an internal monologue in this Donghua. In this Donghua. So in the novel, it's going to be interesting to see like what he's thinking before he says what he says, if we get that. That's going to be interesting. I love that San Long's like... <laughs> You think so little of yourself. Why? He says, you're quite different from the rumors. And he's like, oh, did, how did your highness know about these said rumors and that I'm the crimson rain salt flower? And he's like, I used all means to test you, but you were flawless. So you have to be a devastation rain ghost. Also, you were, he's like, you were in red. Like, like there's been no other character solely in red. It, it seemed to fit the motif. Omniscient, omnipotent, and fearless. So, I like that for, for um, how he is described by Shi Lian, he is described as omnipotent, omniscient, and fearless. Like, he was not afraid of anything and seemed to know what was going to happen. Like, you're, the, the red flags of a devastation rank ghost, right? He's like, who else can you be but the Crimson Rain Sot Flower? A name feared by many. And he's like, ouch, little old me. He's like, can I take that as a compliment? Like, the, quit flirting and kiss already. <laughs> I just, you two. I feel like the two of them sitting there flirting and Bond using the jar in the background. Like, God, dads. <laughs> let me go walk. Some, let me go take, yeah. It's right around the time she like flips. She's like, make him, let me go take a walk so you guys can have your privacy, please. I don't want to sit here while you guys flirt with one another. <laughs> I love it. I love they both look at each other like, you, you going to handle her? You going to, you, am I going to handle her? You going to take care of this? What, what we going to do? And she just rolls herself out of there and just pops herself up towards the moon. Aww. I like how San Long stays behind and lets Shilian go and talk to her. San Long keeps his distance, but also stays close, right? Stays in proximity. It, there's a distance there. It's like there's always a distance, but proximity. It's like San Long doesn't want to let Shilian out of his sight, but he doesn't want to smother him either. Right? And so then we have this beautiful conversation with Ban Yu, and I love her little ghostly form. I, I love that it's this little ghostly form, and he like sits there and strokes her head. And she still calls him General Hua. It's so cute. So... We have uh, old Banyu over here, and Banyu is still worried about Pei Jr. It's funny because it's kind of like if if Banyu was dating Pei Jr. in the last episode, Pei Jr. just got a fight with the father. <laughs> it's like it's like Hua Chong's the dad and. Pei Jr. comes to pick her up. I'm just picturing this alternate, like, modern AU where Pei Jr. comes to pick Ban Yu up and Hua Chong's sitting at the door like, let's go. You're not taking my daughter out on a date. <laughs> just, and it all goes down from there. I'm sure this fan fiction exists. Someone link it to me, please. <laughs> as long as there's not spoilers. So then, yeah, Shi Lian says, I don't really know. It's up to the heavenly realm to decide what they're going to do with him. But they're not going to do much. He's he's the descendant of Pei Ming. There's not going to be a lot happen to him. I'm sure, I'm sure it's going to be the wrist slap and he's going to go on his merry way. He just may be forbidden from going back to Half Moon Pass. I'd say that's worst case scenario. He's not allowed to see Ban Yu. I'm going to say that's worst case. And then Ban Yu's like, he's not a bad person. That I'm sure of that. I love she's like, he helped me. And she's like, Kamo thought that I was tricked, but she's like, I made the choice. It was me who chose to open the city gates. And so, and, and Shelian tries to make her feel better. Like, hey, it's all over. Like, that's all in the past. Like, you can't, I know you're a ghost, but you can't focus on the past, right? And I love that he just reaches over to pat her head. It's so cute. It's so cute. And try to make her, and she's like, I'm so sorry. And he's like, why are you apologizing to me? I, you, did, I, you didn't do anything wrong. And she says, I want to save the world. So, so Banyu says that the choice, that the choice was hers. 
She wasn't tricked, which makes me think when it connects to this next point here, that at some point, at some point, and it may be during the plague, the, the human face disease that comes out, it may be something during all of that, but at some point, Shelian, I figure this is tying back to at some point, Shelian caused something bad to happen, and it was his choice, not, he wasn't tricked, he kind of, I feel like him and Banyu were going to parallel each other at some point, where he find out that Shelian was responsible for something, and he wasn't tricked into it, he'd made a choice, and it was a bad choice, and it led to some bad things happening, kind of like what's happened with Banyu. But she says that in the past, he told her that he, I want to save the world. That that's what he told her. And he was like, wait, what? And he's like, what are you talking about? She said, you're the one who said that. And much like the human face disease, he gets freaked out. Like, just like the human face disease where he's like, what? Ooh. He's like, oh, I said that? I love that he's always, like, sitting, like, with his legs crossed as this happens. But he's like, oh, he's like, oh, let's not talk about that. And he puts her back in the jar. And San Long's like, hmm, what's this? What's going on? He's like, did I really say that? Hmm. And she's like, yes. <laughs> you once, once you asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. And she said that I didn't know. And so you said, and we flash back to what she sees. And I, I think we've seen this flashback before. We just never saw his face fully. But in the sunlight, she sees him in the garb. Again, he does not look good in the soldier garb, but what can we do about it? But he has, okay, he has the, he also has, but this was 200 years ago. So he's had, he's had the bandages at least 200 years. So Here's another thing. We'll just put this up at the top. I'm sure it's been said before, but I never had it confirmed. So I was like, eh. So Shi Lian, he is 800 years old. Or he's been a god for 800 years. Okay. But he didn't meet Ban Yu until 200 years. Right? So, but he had the bandages on his neck at that point and we know that he he wasn't the original god right so we know he wasn't the original god the martial god and i'm assuming he wasn't the plague god either so it was it was post plague post plague pre-scrap <laughs> but so something happened with the plague he was only a god for 30 minutes I don't like this. I don't like the second timeline. I don't like that at all. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to know when we get into the novel. I know that's the big mystery to be revealed and I don't want spoilers, but there's like, I'm pinning it in the back of my brain that, okay, he was a martial god. Something happened. We'll get the timeline stuff down here in a little bit. So, well, let's, we'll just start the timeline over here. So we know that 800 years ago, so we know that 800 years ago that Shelian ascended the first time, or so we think. All right, and let me theorize with this. If I'm wrong, we will alter and edit this timeline as we go through the novel, as we learn new things. But I'm gonna put way down here, we're gonna put that down here, we have the present time. So we have the present time. And then we have 200 years ago, 200 years ago, he was still say, saying, that he wanted to save the world. So he was still really optimistic and stuff 200 years ago, right? And so he also had the bandages. Okay. So at what what is the mystery point in between here? Is that there is like a, well, that's 200 years. So there's a, so if we think, right, that 600 years passed. So yeah, there's a 600 year span that we're not sure about, which is quite a long time. Uh, half a, half a, you know, a quarter of a millennium, a 600 year span there. That is a big question mark for us that we don't know as the audience watching the Dong Wall, we don't know information about yet. We'll find out at some point in this span, there was the plague and his 30 minute ascension. And at some point, there was his descension from the first time. 
Now, I'm going to say something about that and, and saw long later, but I'm just going to leave it like that for now. We'll come back to it towards the end here. But he's like, my dream was to save the world. And he's like, oh, I, I, it was something I said on a whim. So he is, surprisingly, our cinnamon bun is much more cynical now than 200 years ago. So in those last 200 years, some stuff's gone down, right? To make him not feel that way. He's like, did you take it seriously? She said, you sounded very sincere. And he was like, oh, he's like, really? I can't even remember. So that's the thing. He has shut out and forgotten the line about wanting to save the world. Our boy, what trauma have we been through? And she's like, I remember. So she's almost doing like, again, I've talked about this in other series. But it's it's the mean of me thing from Yuri on Ice. I've talked about this in Death Note and other series and um, God, Neon Genesis. I've talked about it in those. But uh, I talked about Neon Genesis. But uh, I'll bring it up here. Is that there's a character named mean of me in Yuri on Ice that's like, well, you know, you made me believe in you. And so if you're denying that now, then that makes me look like a fool. So she's like, I remembered what you said. What you said was sincere. Like, I, I took it very sincerely. Like, don't discount yourself because it makes me look foolish. You always said, do what you believe is right. Nothing can ever stop you. So this whole thing, do what you believe is right, which is not bad advice. Nothing can ever stop you. That's not bad advice. I mean, to a kid, it's saying, you know, don't don't let others tell you it can't be done. Like, do what you think is right, you know, even if nobody else, you know, follows along. And he's like, what a load of nonsense. And he thinks that. He doesn't say that because he doesn't want to make her feel bad. But how cynical. Our cinnamon bun thinks that that's just not possible. I'm like, he's you know, seemed like this ray of sunshine and optimism up until this point. And it's like, wait a minute. No. And then he sighs and he's like, I don't think that is who I am. Oh, so he, he's like having an identity crisis himself. He's having an identity crisis where he thinks, thinks he's not what others perceive him as. Which is a fun contrast. We've said this entire time that him and Song Long are like total opposite of each other. They're like yin and yang. And Shi Lian's like, everybody thinks I'm this pure, wholesome creature. I'm not. And nobody believes me. They just think I'm the cinnamon bun, but I'm not. And then Song Long, conversely, thinks he's a monster. <laughs> And he's not. And so it's like, what? You two, you two complete each other. You just need to be together to balance each other out. He's like, or am I? It's like, I don't think that's who I am. Or am I? He doesn't know who he is. He's having an identity crisis. He doesn't know who he is. I'm like, Shelian. Shelian. Oh, buddy. And she's like, I used to think I did the right thing, but now I can't tell what's right from wrong anymore. I opened the gate and let the enemies in. As a result, my people were massacred. So yeah, she, our poor girl Ban Yu goes through the trolley problem and says that she's not, she doesn't know, doesn't know right from wrong. And to be fair, her situation was really bad. And like we've talked about in the comments, there's not a good solution because she says here, she's like, I opened the gates and my people were massacred and my kingdom was gone. But if I didn't open the gate, then the half moon people would have taken the Yongin people down with them and killed them too. So she's like, I really, she's like, I didn't have a choice. She's like, you treated me well, General Hua, but so did Kamo. So she's like, I had people on both sides of my, because Pei Jr. was using General Hua as a motivation for her to open the gates, being like, this is what he would have wanted to do to save everybody as a whole. Take everybody off the board, right? And so that's why she did it. But she laments, she's like, I believed in you, but I also believed in Kamo. And now I've let him down and I'm afraid I've let you down too. And it's like, 
yeah, she just didn't have a good choice either way, right? There was no good choice in that scenario. But her seeing the blood on her hands and she's like, the soldiers followed me obediently this whole time. Like they listened to me and I caused their deaths but I didn't even relieve their suffering. I kept them going as ghosts long after that. She's like, ah, uh, she's like, just so sad. I don't know what I was doing for the last 200 years. And I don't think that Shi Lian knows what he's been doing either, right? He has an identity crisis too. And he just looks so sad at her. And he's like, if so, I was busy doing nothing for the last 800 years. So he doesn't think that he's accomplished anything he's wanted to for the last near thousand years, which is really sad, right? Hmm. So he's been just, you know, for the last 800 years being like this. And she's like, could you tell me where I went wrong? Where did I make the mistake? And he's like, oh, honey, it's not that easy. And it's just those little head pads. He's like, I'm sorry, Banyu. I don't know the answer. Yeah, he's like, I can't tell you what you did wrong because there's no way to know. There's there's no way you could have predicted what to do. And he's like, life's not that simple. Even I, I still don't even know. So yeah, Shi Lian is like, he tells her there are, there are no easy answers. There just isn't. He's like, I can't give you an answer that will make you feel better because... There aren't any easy answers. I'm just realizing that Banyu has maybe the best and worst parents, <laughs> parental figures, because it's Shilian and San Long, so you're like, oh, best parents ever. But in reality, it's a pseudo deity that's been on and off, that has memory problems and an identity crises and doesn't really have any self worth, that's like, and can't cook and is failing at keeping things together as a parental figure. <laughs> and then you have, on the other hand, San Long, who is a devastation rank ghost that likes to kill everybody that's not Shi Lian or Banyu. So it's a fun, fun parental set there. Parent-teacher conferences are not happening. So did he just, did he leave her outside the jar? Did he leave her out in the jar? He did. He left the jar outside. I, nobody's gonna take the jar, we're fine. Nobody's gonna bother this ghost jar. We're all good. He just, he lets her go, like go roam around. I'm sure she wanted to stay outside. She's like, I don't want to be in on your guys' business, even though nothing happens. It's like the most sensual, non-sexual experience in the world, this OVA. Um, but yeah, so Shilian realizes that Bon Yu, that she stayed there. She stayed there herself at the Half Moon Pass. She was never forced to stay there at all. She just stayed around trying like a ghost to finish unfinished business and it just never ended up happening. And then you have Pei on the other hand who never revealed himself and was just this travel guide. So it's, it's complicated. And so then San Long is like, hmm. He's like, General Pei Jr. could have sent an alter ego to take care of the spirits. So Shi Lian questions, he's like, okay, Pei Jr. He could create alter ego like Zhao why didn't Zhao just get rid of the spirits? Why do you keep feeding people to them instead? Like, that just kept making Banyu feel awful. He's like, why did he feed people to the spirits instead and just keep this whole thing going? And San Long's like an alter ego spirit power is weaker. So he can't get rid of many spirits. Instead, feeding people would appease the grudge faster. He's like, in the eyes of a heavenly official, humans are no more important than ants. So, that, that in itself, okay, that in itself says a lot. That San Long, because San Long was human at one point, right? If he's the little boy that Shi Lian saved, he was human at one point. So, he believes, I'm going to put it in red, believes that the heavenly realm view people as ants as just insects. They don't care about them. The only thing that they want people for is to get power from their merits. That's it. And Song Long may not be wrong, with, with the exception of Shi Lian, who clearly cares about Banyu and what she thought. 
But, so yeah, we get the idea that the alter egos are weaker, right? That's just interesting. And so then she lands like, well, wait a minute, the alter ego is weaker? Well, well your alter ego's pretty impressive. <laughs> and he's like, oh, really? He's like, this is my original form. So, here's the thing, two things. One, the fact that Son Long's alter ego is the weaker version of him. Okay, that that's establishing how strong he is. But this whole thing where he's like, this is my original form. And it's like, oh, is it now? Really? That cheeky grin and that smile. Hmm. But here's the thing, Son Long, not, he told him to call him that. Like, this is, this is the persona he has put on for, for Shilian to try to, Im, to try to impress him, right? So we have, I'm going to put Son Long. Son Long is a form to impress and love Shi Lian. He, it's his accessible form. He's like, look, I look like a human. I look like a totally normal dude, just normal Son Long, a totally normal human Shi Lian that you can totally love and not be, you know, ashamed of at all or be scared of. And Shi Lian's like, huh? Original? When he grabbed his face and like brought it in, I was like, oh, Oh, ho, ho, okay. I was like, now keys, <laughs> you know? But he's just like, he's just like pressing around on his face and Shilian's like, or Son Long is like, hmm. And he's like, oh. He's like, nice. He's like, nice. It, it's, it's a good face, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, so is this mask of mine looks nice to you. So yeah, it's the mask, because he put it on like at the moment, he's like, is this the form that you would want me to look like to impress you? And Shilian's like, I don't know. <laughs> he's like, I guess. And Shilian's like, yes, it's very nice, but can I have a peek at your original form? Like what you really look like? And he's like, mm, maybe one day. It's like, ugh, how dare you? He's like, let's eat first, don't worry about it. And then he burned, he burned the soup. I was like, Son Long was there the whole time while you were talking to Bon Yu. He could have taken that soup off. Could have, could have helped it. But here's the thing. Son Long was like, we, we don't need to eat. <laughs> we're just going to skip dinner and go straight to the main event. He's like, oh, it's fine. I'll show you some other time. I'm not that hungry. He's like, let's just take a break. Let's go, let's go sleep down here, shall we? Uh-huh. And so Shilian's like, I, I guess... I can't wait to read this in the novel. If this is if this is like an end of a novel chapter, I can't wait. I I'm so excited. And yeah, Son Long just oh Son Long, oh my god, like what a move. Like what what a dude move. Like the guy comes over to your house, you invite him over for dinner, and dinner doesn't you're you know, you invite him over for dinner, you get to talking, you burn dinner, and he's like, it's fine, I'm not that hungry. Where does he go? Straight to the bed. Like, what is this so long? <laughs> what, a, what a classic move. What a bold move, sir. Like, <laughs> I'm taking a screenshot of it, just so y'all know. Oh my god, and Shilian's like, and Shilian just doesn't even, doesn't question it. It's not like, oh, you want to go to bed? Okay, no, he just immediately sits down beside him. God, I feel like I'm watching like a teenage after school movie for <laughs> the two of these. And he's like, you were always loitering around. Don't you have to report to the ghost realm? I think that Shilian wants to go to the ghost realm. I want Shilian to go to the ghost realm, or maybe I don't. <laughs> I want him to go. I want him to go to the ghost realm. I want him to go see the ghosts. I want to see what it's like. I want to see if it's different. Cause the way that, the way that, um, well, I don't know if I want Shilian to go to the ghost realm because a song long makes it the, the rumors by the heavenly realm made the ghost realm sound like this nonstop bloodbath and battle and that it was just hell. But is it really like that or is it just kind of like chaos? I don't know. Because like, don't you have anybody to report to? And he's like, who would I report to? He's like, report to whom? The ghost realm has its ways. No one controls us. Besides, I'm the boss. Who dares boss me around? Uh, so San Long establishes that the ghost realm, the ghost realm has no boss but him. Hmm. 
I feel like the Calamities are in charge of the ghost realm. I feel like the Calamities like have their own territories and Saw Long is just like maybe the more powerful of the Calamities. But I don't know. The They've made like the Blackwater, the Blackwater Calamity, the one that crashes ships and stuff, which I'm wondering, I don't know how this would be. I don't know how this would be, but could it be, could the Water Master and the black water devastation be one in the same? Is the lady in black the black water devastation that she's also a god? Can you be both at the same time? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't want to be spoiled, but that's curious. I wondered if he, I, everybody was like, you should pay attention to the black, the, the black lady in black. I'm like, I know, I'm pinning it. I know she's important. They shared a look. They clearly have history. So of course I'm going to pin that back there. But I'm like, I wonder if she could be the devastation and like she's disguised herself as a deity. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I'm going to read the novel. I'm going to find out. So don't worry. I will learn the secrets eventually. But I, when he seems, he says he's the boss. No one who dares to boss me around. I thought based on what we knew from like episode five, episode five or six, that the Blackwater and Chi Rong were maybe the, the weaker ones of the four. But the one with the creepy mask that Shi Lian seems to have a very, very bad, no good history with, that one seemed like the strongest to me. I figure like that's like the boss that we don't want to disturb right now. And San Long is either on the same playing field or right up there with him. I, the, the Bon, was it Bon, Bon Shang? I feel like they're like the big bad of all of this. They, this, they have a creepy mask. Does not bode well. <laughs> it's like, speaking of masks, right? So speaking of masks, we might as well just put them up there. That, is it Bon? I'm gonna put BW. That he is the calamity with a mask. Mm. Not having it, Cotton. So yeah, he's like, who would boss me around? And Shilian's like, oh, I see. I thought you were centralized as the upper court. And San Long's like, uh, we're not as rigid as them. I love this song. San Long's not even bothering to open both his eyes. But he only opens the the one eye that's not, that supposedly, because we, we see the eye patch go over this eye. So this is the only eye that's open. So it's like the eye that's not been carved out is the one that opens and looks at him. Hmm. It's like, we're not as rigid as them. And he's like, oh, well, in that case, have you met the other ghost kings? And he's like, yes. He's like, what about the green ghost, Chi Rong? He's the one that we've been thinking, looking about. He's like, oh, that tasteless piece of trash. <laughs> oh, my gosh, a trash king. Yes, a trash king ghost. I'm so excited to meet Chi Rong. I, I, have a, I found myself having a soft spot for diva, character, for diva antagonists and trash kings. So... <laughs> I'm probably gonna like Chi Rong a lot just because of those type of characters in real life I'd have nothing to do with people like them but in fictional worlds I'm like yes please give me a trash king I want to I want to see the filth so yeah I, I'm excited he's like I greeted him once and he ran off so hmm and she she leans like I guess it wasn't the usual greeting I guess it was a he thinks it was like a bloodbath he's like oh I guess it wasn't like a normal like hello goodbye and I love that Song Long's like oh it was a usual greeting. It earned me the title Crimson Rain Sought Flower. Like, like massacred his minions. And he's like, did you have a problem with him? And he says, he's an eyesore to me. I'm like, is that on the nose? Is, is Chi Rong the reason he doesn't have an eye? Is that it? Hmm, so many theories, so many questions. MXTX takes this like one conversation with two flirty characters and opens up like, here's a question, here's a question, here's something you should pin in your brain for later, here's something you should think about, maybe you should theorize about this, probably wrong, but you should probably think about it. It's like, MXTX, give me a break. He's like, not just to me, but Blackwater as well. So Chi Rong is an eyesore to Son Long and Blackwater. Again, I'm like, is, is black water, is black water and the water master connected? And she wrongs an eyesore to both them and to, uh, Son Long. Is that somehow how we're going to see her again? Is that, is she going to get like tasked with going and finding Chi Rong and that's going to lead him to Son Long and to, and to the lady in black? Are we going to do that? I'm all for it. I'm all for a pirate adventure <laughs> on the high seas. Let's do it. Son Long
Sean looks like a pirate. Let's go. He's got an eye patch. We can make this work. I give Shelian. Shelian's got a big hat with a veil. It'll work. It's spooky. He's like black water submerging boats. Do you know him well? He says no. I figured he was gonna say I don't know him well, but I know her well. Like she. I figured he was gonna go with that. And I love that he's just like no. <laughs> I I love his little cat face. Again, he's a fox, but it's like no. <laughs> Very cute. He says no. I don't know many ghosts. Don't have to. So interesting. Apart from the devastation ghost, no ghost has the right to talk with me. Oh! Oh, okay. So unless they're super, super strong. He sounds really childish there. He sounds like kind of childish. So I wonder if, you know, he's probably hundreds of years old. 800 years old, probably, if we're going by the same. Or like around 800, if we're going by the timeline of... His first ascension was around the time that he saw San Long for the first time. But he has this, San Long has like a childish charm to him too, right? There is a childish charm there saying like, no ghost has the right to talk with me. Hmm. I just, I love that cocky face. I told you all I was going to take all the photos and I was not lying. And so she lands like, oh, <laughs> Well, the ghost realm sounds good. I was like, Shelian. Again, I think Shelian wants to go to the ghost realm. I want Shelian to go visit as long as he doesn't run into the mask man. The mask man seems like no good, bad trouble. We don't want to mess with him. I don't, I don't want to see him. He seems like bad news. He seems like PTSD waiting to happen. We can get time for that. I just want, I want Shelian to have a spirited away adventure to the ghost realm. I want it to be supernatural and weird. Like when they were on the cart ride and we saw like the, the guys that were like the prisoners coming out with the lanterns and stuff and the little ghosts that were like the willow wisps. I want to see freaky, fantastical things like that in the ghost realm. And Song Long is like their king. I want to see this. And I want Shelian to be like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm happy. I want this so badly. It only has a few important figures. I have trouble remembering all the names in the heaven realm. So Shelian, being the cinnamon bun that he is, finds a way to spin this in a good direction. Because what, what San Long says is kind of selfish and kind of mean. Where he's like, it, it kind of, he says it like he's above all the other ghosts. He's like, oh, only if they're devastation rank are they good enough for me to talk to. And Shelian's like, well, that's fine. I'm sure that if you only talk to a few people, you only have a few names to remember. And my memory is really bad. So that would be great for me. I'm like... Quit being a damn saint. <laughs> and he's like, hmm. He's like, well, then don't bother with it. Oh, and he's like, oh. I was like, I don't want to offend anyone. I was like, <laughs> she lands like, I didn't mean to offend anybody. And, and, and Song Long's like, oh my God, you cinnamon roll. And he's he's like, <sighs> and he just, he just laughs. He's like, if one is so easily offended, he might just be narrow-minded trash. Yeah, just spouting off, and poor Shelian's like, "Oh no, I don't think that." And then, and then he, it seems like a little bit of a front, right? So again, again, Sa Long, the childish charm, and the cynical, like smart Alec tone, it's kind of a front too. It's a mask, right? He really is a lot more caring, perhaps underneath that, perhaps caring for Shelian. Maybe not anybody else, but there is something else under the surface there. And he kind of lets his guard down there a little bit when he sees that Shelian isn't impressed by that answer. And that shot when they look out the window and there's bars, it looks like a prison. Like both of them are prisoners of their own realms, right? That both of them are prisoners of either their ghostlyhood or their godlyhood. And that's such a really cool metaphor for both of them because I think that both of them strive to like free each other from, from those prisons. Hmm. Or maybe more so San Long to Shilian. He's like, I wonder when Banyu will be back. And he's like, oh, she's got a lot on her mind. Kid's probably going to go. Let her be. Don't worry about her. She'll come back on her own. And he's like, hmm. All right. <laughs> I guess so, since you put it that way. And he's like, by the way, that line was good. And he's like, what line? He's like, I want to save the world. And Shelian's like, oh. And he gets really, he gets 
Uh, he gets kind of traumatized from that for a second. Like, we don't know what he's thinking, but he gets, tra like, that look on his face is not one of, like, oh, haha. -ha. It's one where he's like, oh, I'm really afraid of what I just said. It's like, what has happened to our poor boy to make him so traumatized? And he's just like, oh, so long. But the way he says it, he was just like, oh, so long. Like, it's almost like he's embarrassed, but, like, it was too much. Like, like he short-circuited. And then he's like, oh, really? He's like, why are you so like that? He's like, what's wrong with that? And then he's like, it's dumb. Oh. And he's like, hmm, if you say so. He's like, there are a few people in history that have the courage. So I like this. So th this line here that he says that there are few, that there are few with the courage to judge the world. There are few that would have the courage to do that, to judge the world. But there are even fewer who want to save the world. So yeah, so fewer to save it. Because that's what the thing he says. He's like, he says it's easier. He's like, it's, you know, it's easy to judge others. It takes courage to judge the world for doing something bad, right? So yeah, it, it takes courage to stand up and say, no, this is wrong. I'm going to take on the world and judge you for this and make you, you know, hold yourself responsible for this. It takes courage to do that. But it takes even more courage to say, I'm not going to judge people. I'm going to try to save everyone instead. So he's trying to compliment Sheila and saying, no, that's not a bad thing you did. And he's like, I admire those people. So San Long, he admires. He's basically saying, I admire, you know, Shilian's ideology. He's like, I admire you for standing up and wanting to save the world. Because if he was once human, it seemed like if he was that little boy with the bandages, he was possibly really from, you know, he could have been poor. He could have been, his people could have been oppressed. And he just didn't have the power to save anybody or to do anything. And so Shelian represented that that possibility to him, right? Maybe. And Shelian's like, he's like, it's easier said than done. So he knows, he knows that it's that that ideology is not easy, and that it's probably failed. And that's why he has such a cynical view of it, right? And he's like, well, despite all the difficulties, you still stand firm. He's like, isn't that even more precious? Like, you you still tried even knowing how difficult it is. And he's like, oh. He's like, I said something even dumber when I was young. And I was like, oh, no. The moment he started talking, it was like, he doesn't realize that Song Long is the little kid. He doesn't know. He doesn't know it's him. He's like, when I was young, I said something even dumber. And he's like, oh, what was that? What is it? He says, many years ago, someone told me that he can't go on living. And he asked me what it is, what's the purpose of living, and what's its meaning. And Son Long's like, like he keeps a straight mask, right? Like that face, he keeps that mask up. But Son Long says that he was asked that there was a boy, so there was a boy that was going to give up. And then he asked, he asked the purpose, the purpose of living. He's like, I don't feel like I can go on. Why should I? What's the point of living? And he's like, do you know what my answer was? And he's like, what was your answer? And then I love, I love he gets so close to him. I, again, there's so many like near kiss shots. I'm like, what are we doing? I said, and he makes the he makes the grand gesture. He says, "If you can't find a reason to live, then take me as your reason to live." And then Song Long's like, "Oh my God!" And he's like, "If you can't find the meaning of living, then take me as the meaning of your life." And that and Shelian doesn't know that that those words have probably made that little boy become Hua Chong. Like that's led him to this moment. Like like just that faith that he could believe in him. And so Shi Lian said, Shi Lian said, let me be your reason. 
and what and watch Wong's like oh my god and then he laughs he's like what was i thinking of i can't say anything like that anymore he's like he's like i was a fool she Lian's like i was a fool to say like to tell a kid that he could just rely on me and everything was going to be fine because he's like when he told Ban Yu, he's like what have i done in 800 years i haven't saved the world i haven't done anything close to that He's like, I've been a failure. I'm just a scrap collecting god who can't even make his own shrine. He's like, I'm useless. He's like, I had no right telling that kid that. Oh. And San Long. Oh, he's like, it's hardly, it's already enough to be someone's meaning of life, let alone saving the world. And the fact that we don't see his face. He's like, I wonder how he's doing now. Well, you know, your words kind of had a big impact on him. He's a Devastation Ring ghost. It's the king of the ghost realm. He he moved his way up real quick. Uh, did a good job. I was like, oh my God. And I was wondering what he was going to say. I was like, how is Son Long? Because basically, I mean, I don't think Shi Lian was intending to insult Son Long by saying that he was... Shi Lian is calling himself dumb. Shi Lian's like, I was an idiot for recommending that. Like, how could I tell somebody to believe in me? when I don't even believe in myself and I am not great like I told that kid I would be. And what he doesn't realize is that San Long has probably for the last 800 years been using him as an inspiration, doesn't have a clue. And he says, it's brave but dumb to have such ambitions. And he's like, when we were young. And he's like, yeah. But then he, he goes, but he smiles. Like he gets over it pretty quick and he says, it's dumb but also brave. And Shilian's like, oh, thanks. And he's like, you're welcome. Hmm. So yeah, so, so he says that he's basically also tells, he also tells Shilian, he's like, you're dumb, but brave. He's like, yeah, that whole ideology of, of trying to save the world, it, it's a dumb philosophy. It's probably not going to happen, but it's really brave that you tried, that you thought you could do it. He says, however, your highness poured out your soul to me. And he says, aren't you curious why I approached you? And he's like, I'll leave it to death. I, you know what? I, any other character, any other character would be like, yes, tell me why you approached me, please. Not our cinnamon bun deity. He's like, no, you'll tell me eventually. I'm like, Clearly, Shelian does not realize that he's in a novel and that we would all like to know these answers. <laughs> but no, it, it's, they both give each other space, right? They, they both give each other space to walk closer if they want to. San Long and Shelian both, they're like, no one can make you talk if you don't want to. So I'm going to give you your space. If you want to come to me and tell me, you will. And if I want to come to you and tell you things, I will. But we're on, it doesn't have to be equal. It's just on our own terms. We do whatever we want when we want it. And it's like, okay. If I, even if I drive you away, wouldn't someone as omnipotent as you come back with a different mask? So he's like, yeah, he's like, even if, even if I make you leave, who's to say you won't come back just looking different? He doesn't know. At this point, Shilian does not know what San Long actually looks like. Although I think he does get a guess there at the end. We, the audience, get to see it. He's like, so let's just take it easy. And then, but then so Long's like, what if my original form is hideous? And I'm like, what? He's like, do you still want to see it? And he like scratches his hand, but I'm like, are you going to be hideous? I don't, I don't think you are. <laughs> I don't think you are going to be hideous. I, no, mm -mm, I, I think it's going to be like, at worst case scenario, it's when Prince Adam turns back from the Beast into, at, at worst case scenario, it's either like when you see the Beast in Beauty and the Beast, and you're like, oh, okay, he's a Beast. Yeah, but he's got a charm to him. Or he's going to turn around and be like Adam when he turns back from being the Beast, and you're like, oh, okay, well, he's a person. So, I, I, when he says, the, what if I'm hideous, and then she lands, well, if so, he's like, what if I'm a hideous looking Beast? I'm like, is this some Beauty and the Beast shit set up? I mean, Beauty and the Beast is my favorite Disney film. I'm here for it, 1,000%. But, Shelian's like, oh, I don't, I still want to see it. <laughs> Shelian's like, we got me curious now. I want to see what it is. I don't think Shelian would judge him. Because we're friends now. And he's like, what if I want to be more than friends? <laughs> 
He's like, and friends should be sincere with each other. Rest assured, as long as it is who you really are, I will. And he's like, no. <laughs> he just turns back like, I don't want to hear it. Like, you don't mean that. Uh, but for a second, I thought he was crying. And then he's laughing. But I wonder if that's the mask. I wonder if the, if the mask laughing is really him laughing or if he's crying and just the mask is hiding it. Maybe. And he's like, why are you laughing? Am I wrong? And then he laughs and he says, no, no. He's like, you have a very good point. He's like, that doesn't sound sincere. He's like, forget it, good night. I was trying to say that I wouldn't judge you and that I didn't care if you were a monster and you just won't hear me out. He's like, next time, if you don't mind, I'll meet you in my original form. I was like, oh my God, are you joking? Are you joking? I want to see it so bad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he heard him that time. He was like, stop talking, I'm already asleep. <laughs> He's like, okay. And I love that he faces him. Like, unlike last time when they were back to back, now now he's now he's facing Shelian. And I wanted him to grab that ribbon so badly. I wanted him to grab it. I wanted him to grab the ribbon, but he couldn't do it. He got close, but then he backed off. I'm like, damn it, no. He's like, I swear, you'll never find anyone who is sincere than me in the whole world. Oh, and I think that applies to both of them, right? Mm. Oh my God. But then, yeah, it rains. And the next day, Shelian gets up and everything is all set and all put together. Bon Yu's back from a jar. Everything's all, he, what a great boyfriend. He got up and yeah, he didn't stay until the morning, but he got up and he, he raked the leaves. He cleaned up the drive, left things in order. Could we ask for much more? Could have laid breakfast out, but we won't hold it against him. <laughs> we don't actually know if he's a good cook or not, so. But yeah, but yeah, he just basically left everything. And so, but then he put, he put a ring of silver around his neck. That's what's been in the OP the whole, in the ED the whole time, the ring. I thought it was like a jewel. No, it's a ring of silver. But that's the thing. The silver is like the butterflies and the ring is like the, the red string of fate. Ugh, that silver ring or it's crystal or whatever. And it twinkles like the butterfly wings. And that's when we get the hand with the ring gone. Oh my God. And then all, they, they tease us so much. Where he's like looking up. What a troll. <laughs> oh no! I'm like, I'm like, shut up. Yep. Definitely a monster. Not a 10 out of 10 here. This incredibly tall guy with beautiful, long, silky hair and braids, you know, helping you out. I'm like, what, just, just the fudge. Mm -hmm. Someone said that in the Discord that y'all had to wait months for this to come out. I'm sorry. I feel for you all, but I'm sure this was so rewarding when you finally saw it. And we see the cuts of what we saw in the movie in the first episode versus, and so he runs back inside thinking that he'll see him. And it's juxtaposed with the boy running back to the temple. Ah, uh, and so him seeing San Long on the cart, like seeing him, oh man. And all the moments of them together. And I'm sure he thinks he won't see him again. It's like Shilian. Oh, and no, he didn't say Shilian, he said Guga. He said Guga the whole time. So he said Guga when he fell into the pit? Ugh. And so we see him looking, we see him as San Lon looking at the picture to paint. Something is missing in your shrine. And we cut back to the red umbrella that was left outside of the shrine. The red umbrella that little boy took with him from the shrine. Oh. So that little boy with the bandages all around him too. Like what the hell happened? I'm assuming we'll find out eventually, but I don't like it. But it's this village like seemingly in ruin and this kid and he runs towards the shrine where Shelian is 
And he doesn't... And I love the juxtaposition. They're both running back towards the shrine. But the thing is that San Long is running back to the, towards the shrine of Shilian, thinking he'll see Shilian maybe there. And Shilian's running back towards the shrine of himself, thinking he'll see San Long there. And neither of them are there in that moment. Ugh! Yeah. And it's it's of him as the in the deity, as him with the flower, the prince. So that's in his first ascension, right? I can paint. I'll help you. Shut up! He's so good looking there. I what a yeah what a troll. <laughs> oh, just get out, get out. Like unless that's another hoax too. And him thinking that he'll see him there, but he was gone. Oh, Shelian. He's not there. And then, yeah, we see him in the fight. Like, hello. I'm glad that they showed us the fight again and us being able to see him in real time. I'm glad they showed us that because it's like, it was such a tease seeing just the darkness. And then, okay. I'm like, yeah, there we go. We get a nice, a nice shot of him there. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And him fighting against, against Pei Jr. And then we see him leaping from the air as the crown prince, Shi Lien, catching the boy and the mask flying off. Yep. I love it. Oh, that shot of him is so, it's even more gorgeous than the first episode. That shot of him there. And then the shot of the two of them. Oh my gosh. That juxtaposition between the two of them. Oh, so now wait a minute. There was, so there was. Hold on. That shot of him flying through the air. And we see we see the mask come off and we see the little kid caught by Shilian. But then we see back, we see behind him Hua Chong. So did he realize in that moment that that was the kid? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. So at some point, at some point, the boy... 800 years ago when Shilian first ascended and was the martial god, the, the crown prince, right? Or it was either after he ascended or right before he ascended. One of the two. I, I say after he ascended because he had the power to fly through the air and grab him. That doesn't seem like something a mortal can do. So I figure after his ascension, he saves the boy, tells him his reason for living can be him if he needs something. And at some point, at some point, he gets de-ascended from being a god the first time. And I'm thinking that is around the time that Boy San Long goes to the shrine and gets the red umbrella. Now the question is, that means that he died. That means at some point that boy died to start becoming like a devastation rank ghost. So something bad happened where he died around this time. And so, but was still trying to pursue and find Shi Lian. And maybe as he got older or was a ghost, he realized that since he was no longer mortal, there was a chance he could see Shi Lian because he was, since Shi Lian was a god, he was more likely to see other gods or ghosts. So maybe he was like, I don't want, I really don't want San Long to have killed himself. I don't want that. I don't want that to have happened. I don't like the idea of him being killed, but I there's something maybe better about him like dying in a battle or something than that he killed himself. I don't like that. That's going to be really horribly tragic if that's the case. Mm. But I don't know. But again, MXTX has set up this giant mystery timeline that I'm sure Whiteboard Coon is going to have to come out and help us break down <laughs> as we go through this, right? So yeah, when I do the audio drama stuff, I may have to have Whiteboard Coon like in the wings waiting to, to come out and help, so, hmm. But yeah, that OVA, oh. That's that's a true ending, is that we're setting up for season two, we're setting up for season two with, with San Long disappearing just as Shi Lian realizes that he might have been the kid that he saved. And he's like, oh shit, I told him that and he was the kid I might have saved and put two and two together, that, some, that somehow they're connected. Hmm. I, this is a much better way to end off before season two, but now I want to read the novel even more. So 
there we go. But with that being said, I'm going to move white bird out of the way because we still have, I'm like an hour into this and we still have two more things to look at. Oh buddy. We still have, we still have like advertisements and extras to watch and the songs to react to. This is going to be a long video, but, but it's so worth it. You all, the OVA, mm, the OVA is my jam. All right. So, but anyway, um, Anime Annie sent us these two, uh, this two clips that she put together. Uh, one is like a one minute long thing of the commercials that have come from Heaven Official's Blessing. If you want to know backstory on this, I love Modao Zushi's Dongwas and the clips that I was given, someone actually sent me the clips, uh, Wei Wu, uh, Wushin Suibian sent me the clips to watch from Modao Zushi. And when I was sent them, they included the Cornetto ads and I fell in love. I was like, it's rare to see an in-show, like in the West, it's rare to see an in-show advertisement done so adorably and wholesome. I was like, I love it. So I was wondering if Heaven Officials Blessing had these as well. And I was told, yes, there were extras as well as commercials. And I was like, bring it on. So Anime Annie, thank you for putting this together. You are a saint. I'm glad that you did this so I didn't have to go out and scour multiple sketch websites to try to find this. So anyway, we are going to watch uh, these extras here first and talk about them. And we're going to do that here in three, two, one. And let's watch this first one. So yeah, um, that was really great. <coughs> and so now I am um, actually am going to do the, so I'm glad I got to see those. Those are really cute. The commercials are great. Those were fantastic. That peach drink. Mm hmm. Is it the new Cornetto? It could be, but that was really neat. I like, I wish I had some subtitles, but I know that was way too much to ask. Um, also, I'm sure somebody would have had to translate that and spend all that time, but that was really cool. Like the, the clay figurines. I want one of Son Long so bad. I love Shilian, but Son Long might be my new one. It's funny because Wanji is my favorite character in Modao Sushi and uh, Hua Chong is kind of like a mix between him and Wuxian. So it's like the best of both worlds. I love Shilian though. He's a damn cinnamon bun, but okay. So I've got my headphones here. I want to listen to the OP and the two EDs. The OP being called No Separation. The ED1 Always Together. And ED2 being like um, Hongju, right? Which what they say means red flower or red rain or something like that. I can't remember. My brain is, the OBAs made my brain mush. So you know how that goes. But I'm really excited to listen to these song lyrics. I've waited all season. Everybody's been like, you need to listen to the song lyrics. I'm like, well, when I get to the OVA, I will. And it is time. So yeah. So let, let, let's dive into this, shall we? All right. Hmm. So I'm going to uh, keep the lyrics up here, but I'm going to get to where I can only hear it. So we are going to uh, look at the song lyrics for the OP. And we're going to do that here in three, two, one, and let's go. And see, this way I get to listen to the OP one more time, <laughs> inadvertently. Oh my gosh, that picture of him in Pochong. Swings a sword but still falls in love. Ooh, with the moon, who's there to pity you? <gasps> the past is butterflies. Holding back tears, waiting to meet again. Oh! So yeah, Hua Chong fell in love with him. As souls roam the city at night. Ooh. Never cools down. My white sleeve's gray. So this is from uh, Xi Lian. After ceaseless chase of fate. Uh-huh. Flowers wither. Oh, like like that die, like that time dies. The poem was full of happiness. Ooh. After the farewell, the flower is damaged, but the drunkenness of the full bloom still remains. Ooh, so withered and damaged flowers. If I miss my chance to see you, this bitterness will have no taste. Bitter sweetness. 
Oh. Oh. Like, he won't know if he doesn't miss him, right? So if they've had these misencounters for however long, he wouldn't know. Hmm. I'm really hoping that artwork is kind of like in the manhua because um, I've heard it's gorgeous. So I'm excited. String of love is cut by a sword, but the love remains. Ooh, ooh. So that red string of fate, something cut it. Okay. Interesting. So, oh, I can't wait to read the novel and find out what happened. Okay. Happiness of meeting again. I like the petals fall like snow as souls roam the city. Hmm. And the love I never believed. So this is from Shelian's perspective, though. But maybe these are things that he doesn't remember that he's talking about in the song. Hmm. Ah. Uh. The flowers withering and being damaged seems like it would refer to Shi Lian because he's connected to the flower he always holds in it, right? But the butterflies represent San Long. The full bloom, the drunkenness of the full bloom still remains after the farewell. Hmm. So it'd be like, you know, it's better to have loved than lost to have never loved at all. So if I don't see you... Nostalgic for the beauty of the full bloom. Hmm. Like the past was full of happiness, but not anymore. I'm so curious by the fact that Sheila and the flowers being damaged seems to like refer to himself, but the love is still there. Hmm. <sighs> Turning around, we had no partings across this long road. Mmm. Ah! Okay. That was so good. I, I really like the OP song. It's really great. So interesting. Interesting. I want to see the other, the EDs, and see from them. Now, this one always together is not the full version, it's just from the ED. It's only a minute and a half, but then the other song is the full version, so. It was harder to find the, the OP lyrics that didn't involve a spoiler. So um, let's do this always together, the first ED. And we'll do that here in three, two, one. And that looks like Shelian and that little boy. Half real, half illusion. And again, flowers and butterflies. Even the sun shaded or the moon dark, nothing is perfect. Pointlessly going to extremes. Trying to solve the unsolvable. Ooh, tying to Shelian. Raging fires gone and wild weeds born. Oh, so everything keeps on going, right? Even after all the good and the bad, like the battles and everything. Hidden in rolls of books. Oh. Yeah, good and evil are interwoven and hard to tell. Nice. There's no coming together, no lingering on. No mystic spell, no re unreal illusion. Hmm. Under the risk in the utopian paradise. They float away and end up becoming immortals. Talking about the gods from San Long's perspective. Silk flies the wind like a dream. Not coming together or going apart. Oh. Oh. Ooh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. So talking about, talking about how it's very melancholy, seeming from Son Long's perspective. I like that not going away, but not, not coming together, but not going apart. Like once they ascend, 
you never are brought together again, but it's not like they're a deity, so they're always there, but you're never with them. So you're never apart from them, but you're never together with them. So there's kind of that, that lingering, right? I've noticed that silk has been brought up in both songs, and definitely flowers represent Shelian, and then the butterflies represent San Long, and the butterflies want to land on the flowers, so... Hmm. But I like in that the idea that it kind of views San Long's opinion that there is no, you know, you can't try to write the world and make it this utopia. It's not going to work out. So that kind of goes back to what he was telling Shili and he's like, well, you, it was dumb. Yeah, you're not going to be able to solve the world's problems, make it this perfect paradise and have world peace. <laughs> but it's a brave idea and it's worth trying, right? Even if it's not solvable. So it's like, hmm. Okay. But then I was wanting to hear the new one, which is from the, like sung by a man that's from supposedly Song Long's perspective. So we're going to start that one here in three, two, one, and let's go. Had to backtrack just a sec. Hmm. Like the umbrella with the different like little tendrils and stuff coming off of it and the butterflies. There's a fairy palace in clouds. Ooh. Red curtains cover up butterflies in the dark. Ooh. I'm going to turn off the car. Cunning hides in a charming dream. Mmm. Partly because the taboo flames burn red entire body. Ooh. Immortal soul and bones of the Tao are just hollow. Ooh. Thread thread in love and inseparable as if bathed in the warm spring breeze. Ooh, nice. Okay, and the lanterns. Flowers will bloom all over the city for you. Sorry, titles and fame. One hand hold the flower, one hand hold the sword to save the common people. Ooh! And I'll improve to be already knives. If there's one faithful believer. Oh. And he's the lamp burning night and day. And be invincible and know of old stories. Endured the ups and downs of life, even bathed in fire to hold it up. Is to give you the rest of my life. Oh, jealous of people around the world. Ooh, so Song Long and his like loyalty to Shilian. He's like, I'll do anything to keep, like to keep you alive. Oh. Talking about like like bathing through fire and like dying and living over and over again to become this devastation ghost to keep you to keep you a deity. The bones of the Tao are just hollow. Inseparable as if bathed in a warm spring breeze. Oh. Hmm. If the body can be moved by a moment of thought in a sea of sin, I can play in fearless and ignorance. Ooh! Scatter of permanence. The strong right to even live or die. Between sword shadow and knife light, beautiful affection can break the primordial world. Ooh! Trapped in the mirror in hallucinations, waiting for all together time after reuniting. Oh, the water's warmer, but can't warm up the clothes redder than maple. This fate will never end. Oh. Ooh. All the fires of evil karma and then rebirth. Oh. 
Like, he doesn't care how many followers you have as long as he's still there for you. Joy, hate, love in the human world. Endure the ups and downs of life. And we'll meet again after reincarnation. Oh, so he's like, I will give you my life over and over again to keep you safe. Oh, ooh, ooh, okay, okay. So getting all this stuff from San Long and, I mean, San Long's perspective in this is pretty on the nose. He's just like, even if I'm your only believer, I will, that, that ties to the little boy. It seems like the little boy at the end of the OVA was saying nobody believed in Shilin anymore. Like they left the shrine. They left like the golden statue just abandoned. And he was like, if I'm the only one that believes you, then I will believe in you. And like, even if no one else will, God, like <laughs> she, Son Long is so on the nose. He's like, even if I have to die and be reborn a million times, I'll do it. Even if I have to become the most devastating ghost in the entire ghost room, I'll do it. If it gets me closer to you, if it keeps you like being a deity and having power, I'll do it because he's devoted his life to you like you said he could. Oh, man. I mean, Sheila Inns is more melancholy and more... Sheila Inns describes himself more as damaged and withered. And though he doesn't look haggard, even though his sleeves have turned gray, he's like, I've lived all this time and I've still not truly changed. And I think he laments that in the OVA. He's like, I haven't changed. He's like, he's like, I spouted off all this stuff about saving the world and being this inspiration. He's like, it's been 800 years and I haven't done anything. I've just been reascended three times, but it's not had a good, nothing good has come of it each time. And so it's really sad. And then you have San Long, who in both the EDs, he's like, yeah, this world's not great, but you are wonderful, Shilian. And you have such a great, and you're a good person. You have a good heart. And he's like, I'll do anything to stay by your side and like to be with you and make sure that you keep on going. It's like, ha, ah, interesting. Well, I'm ready to read the novel now. <laughs> I am. I'm so excited to read the novel. I'm so excited to read the novel to see what will happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty darn excited. I'm not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. I'm pretty darn excited. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be basically um, starting next week. I'm gonna start with the audio drama. We're gonna listen to it. And then I will go and read the chapters. So it'll be one video, but I'll probably, it'll probably take me some different sessions recording it. And then I will go and read the novel and check out the manoir and then come back and we'll talk about it all as a whole. Okay. We'll talk about it as a whole. And I've, I found from Modao Zushi, I, I used to take notes during the audio drama, but I don't think I'm going to anymore because I'm going to read the, uh, the novel chapters right afterwards. So if I take any notes, it'll be with the novel. And then we'll, when we go back and talk about it in the manhwa, then it'll all be together. So I'll probably just listen to the audio drama and react to it like it is, like it would be a, an episode. And then go back and take notes with the novel and then come back from there. So yay. But yeah, oh my gosh, this is... This ended up being a long, a long reaction and video discussion, but it was worth it. So I'm really excited to hear your thoughts down below. If you go, if y'all can do me a big favor, please no novel spoilers. I know it is like eight English volumes that we have to get through. It's a long story, but I'm really, really excited to read it. And I'm really excited to see what all ends up happening in this story. So we shall see. But in any case, I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and yeah, I'll be back very soon with starting the Heaven Officials Blessing Volume 1 of the English novel. Bye.